much and, and how soon. So, so what's happening right now, let me describe the process to you. So right now, the city planning department, they accepted, that department accepted the, um, the, the package of work to review what should go there. Now, it's sort of interesting that they accepted it because under, uh, Mr. under Ms. Rule's watch, that same department down zoned that area. That area, I forget what the number was, was, da was, was, was at some density. Well, uh, uh, let, me see, let me see if I can tell the story first. And the numbers really don't matter yet. They will at some point. So they were at some level of density and land use designation. Then at Ms. Gruel's behest, they got down zone to 20 units, which really means 40 units, because state law gives parcels that are that size the ability to put an additional house on it. And we know that's typically what will happen. There'll be lot splits and that sort of thing. So for all intents and purposes, the number is really closer to 40. So, the, and then it's brought out an awful lot that there's some paperwork that says that it's irrevocable, that it can never be changed. That's that's actually a misnomer. If you look at any sort of planning document, the language is always the same. It's always up to the decision makers and the city planning department on whether to change things, which is why it's so important for us to make sure that we have good community plans in place. We just finalized one that took seven years. It predated my time here. Actually, it started just as I left the city of Los Angeles and finalized uh, here, the Silmar Community Plan. And why those community plans are so important is that it gives us leverage over projects and it gives us a perspective that hopefully will last 10, 15, 20 years. So in the case of Silmar, for example, the and it's not because I'm a resident of Silmar, it's a seven year process and we heard from the stakeholders, the entire community was effectively down zoned a little bit because it's equestrian property. And so we've got a lot going for us in this conversation. What we don't have going for us is a recent community plan. But that's why I think the department decided to go ahead and accept the application. The acceptance of the application is effectively just a review. It's not to say that they won't say yes to something, but they have, they're doing their due diligence. They want to figure out how much housing would be appropriate given the existing uh, sort of landscape. That parcel is really, really difficult. Right, you've got some, you've got species is issues. You've got some areas that aren't buildable, not because they're not desirable, but because of the topography and their basins. I mean, it's a really difficult thing. So what is happening right now is the city planning department is doing that review. They are determining what they think uh, can happen. So as much as folks, you know, will sort of say, "Well, Wendy rule um, this down zoning," it really we have to live in the here and now. The planning department accepted the application they're doing the, their due diligence, we'll know soon enough what they think. At that point, I think it's really important us, for us to figure out what it is that we think, separate and aside from nothing, because I think that right now you can't say nothing because you, you have the ability to put 40 effectively. If this developer wanted to just do what's by right, they have the ability to do something. So the question for all of us is gonna be, what does that environmental report say and what is it that we can live with? I don't know the answer. And as, as, as easy as it might be for folks to say, well, just say no to everything. That's, that's not how I uh, work. I mean, my job is to balance things out and be as pragmatic as possible. That is hard to do. Uh, my, my previous experience has been with Mit, mit, mitigation and the government's enforcement then of, of mitigation agreed upon um, mitigating mitigation of things this development right below us I really didn't have a large problem with it and I'm not a sort of person well who says I have mine and you shouldn't have yours okay actually that's that has come from one of your previous colleagues which seemed to help the same thing but it's when the community agrees upon something and certain types of mitigation are supposed to occur and that's violated and then you hear nothing back from the government or the people who are supposed to be representing you and enforcing these things so you, you know I'll, you speak of the topography this this whole community right here below us is private community you know this this thing's built on 40 feet of hill i won't even go into that that's kind of 
that's kind of a joke. So they'll be able to come up with something out there to get the homes on it and to get the low points filled in and everything else. It, it, it really, you know, my, my whole contention in this matter is smart development, which say maybe getting community more community members in, we can do something about that Kmart sitting out on Foothill, fallow, falling into the ground or whatever the hell is happening right. to it. But, you, you, you know, it really, I probably, I, I, I don't know too many people in the, the, in the community here actually, but I've lived here a long time. And, and my big concern is, and I've been through it, is when we come up with plans and people are reasonable and it says, okay, this is how these problems are going to be mitigated. It seemed to me on this last one, once the stuff went in, you know, and certain things weren't mitigated how they were supposed to be, the community ended up on their own. Now, I personally actually took the brunt of it um, with, with a few things and was ignored. So that's, you know, that's really my major concern at this point. We can have meetings yeah, sure. and we can, you know, we can talk, but quite frankly, you know, from 10, 12 years ago, and not to insult you, but your story seems the same. You know, the voice doesn't change. So I, I, I hope well, it's a little only, more articulate only, only in this the body. You plug into it, you know. Yeah. So, so I mean, look, the, the, the I, I couldn't agree with you more. The, the, the shortcoming I think uh, in a lot of these decisions is the enforceable conditions, right, and the mitigations. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not an attorney. I, I'm an MBA, but not an attorney. My thing is, I want to make sure that whatever deal I'm getting into actually is going to be a lasting deal. And there are, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, which is, let's get back to litigation. I, I, I'm involved in business. I run a very large company and litigation is money. Okay. I can tell you exactly the things I don't litigate over and is it worth it to me. And I can sure tell you that getting some of the things enforced down there, <laughs> the city wasn't going to get involved in the litigation. And I, and I, of course, I wasn't going to crank my own money in, in, into litigating against the developer. So, so, so I, I, not only would it be irresponsible for me to comment on litigation because there isn't any pending, but at some point I, I'm used to getting deposed. I mean, by virtue of the decisions I make, whether it's in my district or not, I have to go and talk to attorneys all of the time because to your point, it's a very litigious environment. So, so to, to, to zoom out a little bit, the uh, mitigations and enforceable conditions, I think, are going to be really important. So let's say there is something that folks can, can I don't live think with. it's fair to come up here and also and to start with the statement of nobody up here wants anything and that, you know, that this is, you know, it, it, it kind of strikes me a little bit weird that you come in and then start up with, with well, you had a choice, you don't want anything down there at all. And I, I it's... It's, I mean, I'm, God, I'm, I'm, I'm having like some sort of weird flashback to 10 or 12 years ago. It's, it's very odd. It's, I mean, All right, let's move on. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, we so, move on. so that's where we are in, in, in the process. I, I don't, I forget off the top of my head when the department's going to come back with the information on their review. But at that point, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to comment on what's been happening. Now, I know the developer has done some scoping meetings to try to figure out what it is that folks uh, want or don't want. Uh, we're not a part of that process. That's the developer. The, the, par the part that I can speak to is the official environmental review that the department is doing. And we'll know in short order what's gonna happen. Now, you know, if I had to, I said a second ago, 242 I think is too big. I think that if, if I were living here, the biggest, biggest challenge that I'd have is the uh, the access to this location. I mean, it's a two-lane highway, one lane in each direction. That's really difficult. But at the same time, I think that to the earlier point that I mentioned is, I think the reason we have such so many villages and encampments, and I'm not trying to tie one to the other, but I'm trying to just help folks understand that we need to figure out something for this area that increases activity so that um, we um, can make sure that we prevent what's happening out there, which is it's fairly comfortable. If you go back there, it's actually much cooler than it is right here yeah. because of the tree canopy. So, 
So something's going to have to happen there, uh, I think, for us to make sure that we're keeping on top of, uh, of the area. Paul? The development down the corner here is an example of the problem growth. It's right near the market and they go in. 16, 18 houses. Well, that's going to help us. That's going to help us. You've got all those families. Yeah, I, I think. Up here, up here, it's, 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 I think that makes a stronger argument for, for for not allowing a private community. Is you know, the things you're speaking of, I'm 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 much more in favor for these exact reasons of not having private communities. Well, I I'll just tell you my personal bias. I don't like gates. Uh, because because I think what that does is it gives this false enclave feeling and it doesn't make it so that we're responsible for everything on the other side of it. So, for example, I've got, I've got projects that, um, and nobody ever, these never get reported. I tell folks no all the time. I also don't like small lot subdivision. Uh, I shouldn't say I don't like it. I, I, there are very few places in the city of Los Angeles that I actually think small lot subdivision actually work. And so I'll give you another example up here. Verdugo Hills, I'm not a fan of that project um, because it's too dense. But surprisingly enough, the folks who, and the reason I don't like small lots of division, it's, it's not because of the aesthetic. It's because they don't put as much infrastructure into a location that I think that we need to mandate. So what ends up happening, for better or for worse, is that local government, depending on who is representing you, is not fighting for that infrastructure. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If you ever drive through my community, in my, in my district in Pacoima, there aren't any street lights because the developers weren't made to do that. So I have more petty crime and issues in an area because I've got street lights, lack of street lights. In an area like this, street lights actually probably uh, don't make a lot of sense in deterring uh, crime because we're so far off the beaten path. What would make sense is figuring out how to step up more patrol, more neighborhood watches, active HOAs. But the, it's a long way to say that this proposal is, 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 is uh, proposed to be a subdivision, not a small lot subdivision. So that makes it a little bit better, but again, the density is, is, is really, really tall. Yes, sir. Um, there's a few things I'm worried about the Can you cultural, speak up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, the, the lawnmower. It's I'm good. worried about the cultural aspects because there's um, Indian um, tribes that claim that area to be sacred for various reasons, but it seems like the planning department is trying to work with them, but not hard enough, apparently. Um, and I was wondering if you know any more about that. And plus, the infrastructure, I've talked to the fire department captain up here at 77 and 74, uh, yes, 74, I believe, right up in Cookville, both to the city hall. And they said that no one has come to talk to them about the proposal about adding that much infrastructure. And I asked him how that would impact the fire department, and he basically said, really bad because we already we already lost one engine it could have gone into a central pool and because we're on the edge of that pool the response time is really long i'm like i know it took 14 minutes at 12 30 at night with nothing else going on you guys will show up for a small little wash Right. Last year, so, so, so the, the the fire department, uh, building and safety, DWP, those folks haven't been talked to because the planning department is literally at just the uh, environmental analysis. At some point, they do talk to those departments, but truthfully, they don't have very much say on the land use side of things, which is something that we should probably change in the city. But let me ask you a, a, a question: How about, let's say it's I'm just going to use a big number, it's a million houses, just so so nobody thinks that I'm favorable to a number. I'm not. But let's say it's a million houses there. How about if one of the conditions enforceable is the dedication of land and the building of a fire station? Would that be a good thing? Yeah, that would be a wonderful thing. That would be really wonderful, actually, to have a fire station out there. They actually need it. And schools are another issue. I know Lydia Grant has come to one of the meetings and, and did the numbers of how many kids this would bring to large single-family homes, you know, and it was a lot, and she didn't think that the schools in the area could take all of that. My, my understanding is the exact opposite, that there's a declining number of uh, the schools actually need, I don't know if you all saw in the paper recently, but the school district went out and knocked on doors uh, at, for homes where they haven't seen the kids in school for some time. They're actually in the exact opposite problem. Locally, not all parts of the city, there are some parts that are denser that, that are okay with their daily census, but this 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 part of town could could uh, hold more kids. So. But so, so that's that's something though that should be analyzed. But my point is that 
you know, to the point about enforceable mitigations, let's say there's, you know, something that folks uh, agree to. I think you're right. I think that we need to figure out how to have more fire response back here. So that might be a mitigation. Now, I, I want to be real clear. I'm not establishing a list of things that will say, hey, <laughs> your, your name? Mark. Mark yeah. said if we got a fire station, Alpine Village will be okay. I, I, I'm just, we're just having a, a nice conversation to be recorded for history. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. neighborhood and think we're just concerned about the view but honestly I think what gets lost in the shuffle is that they have that one lane highway and the forest fires can creep up on us very fast and I'm thinking if you come in the middle of the night and 400 cars try to get out there those people are in real danger not just us here but you know I don't feel comfortable saying you know okay build you know build over there and and you know what happens I mean that that could be a big tragedy and I'm concerned not just for us, although we'll be affected here, but also for them. Whoever buys those homes, they're right. probably not even thinking about Well, th there are them. there are state mitigations for them. So so the, the, the where I live now, I used to live further up uh, at the end of Polk uh, in Silmar. My, my last house, I had to uh, pay a fee to have an inspection to make sure that I cut down my brush because my house was the last one before the hillside. And so my, in fact, uh, we got evacuated twice during the, 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 the firestorms that we had in 2009, 10, I forget the years. Station but we had to leave the station fire and then the other fire. So, so, so there are mitigations in place uh, for that sort of thing. But, but I hear you, the congestion, it comes back I think to the traffic in my mind. Uh, it, the congestion of an area is really important. Um, so we have to look at it. One thing is, uh, uh, what Mark mentioned, uh, which was a good point, to the, what Lydia Bratton was speaking of at our town hall meeting was that the, the stress that's going to add to the schooling is not just one development, but multiple developments that are happening in our community where they're not going to have um, schools or enough fire departments. So it's a cumulative, I'm saying this wrong, it's all of the different uh, developments that will be built much at the same time. We have the Verdugo Hills, we have this canyon park, we have another development that's happening in Rural Vista, just recently we got 18 homes. It was this small project, I don't know if that's still going on. So there are just all of these different projects. Oh, the, um, the Canyon Hills project that's on Latina, because all of these do impact, um, everything kind of channels back to Other, I saw a hand over here. Yes, ma'am. Speak up. I'll repeat it. So, so the concern uh, that we heard here from this woman is that it's the congestion, the cars, the 400 cars on the two-lane highway, and then the Oro Vista sort of how small that street is as well and, and the congestion. So I, I think you and I agree that I think that's probably, I shouldn't say the most obvious, there's a lot of issues, but it's, it's, it's on the top half of the issues that I think we have to all consider. Well, they, they better. I mean, the planning yeah. department, you know, they, uh, th their charge is interesting because they are trying to, I mean, you all have heard that we have a tremendous housing crisis and it's hard to believe that new housing stock actually will help the problem because intuitively a lot of us will think well it's expensive it's not going to help the folks that need it let me tell you that the folks that are needed are, are people that can pay 24 25 three thousand dollars a month for housing the, 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 the crisis is at every level uh, it's not just very low uh, income people it's at every level in the city of Los Angeles I uh, should also mention that I'm the vice chair of the housing committee for the city of Los Angeles. So I know that we're hearing an awful lot about homelessness, but the crunch is at every, every level. And so part of our charge citywide, when I wear that hat, is to make sure that we're trying to accommodate all of 
Los Angeles. And that's hard because a lot of folks will say, well, if we don't build it, they won't come. They're here and they're in, 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 my, and in my district in particular, they're in substandard housing. You probably saw in the newspapers that I uh, authored and uh, later in October, I'm gonna get an ordinance passed that will help uh, conform illegal apartment units into legal units provided they meet certain criteria. And some folks don't like that idea, but the truth of the matter is, these people are currently living in those apartments anyways. And what I can't afford is what's happened in my district, which is I've got fires and tragedies and families dying in garages. Now this ordinance doesn't address that, but it was a way for me to start the conversation and emulate some of the enforcement strategies for something that's called accessory dwelling units. You all don't have that problem as much as I do in other parts of my district, but every single parcel in Pacoima, in Silmar, not every single, about three out of four, is got multiple families living on it. It's gotten so bad that people who could afford uh, the garage are living in RVs in yards. And that's really bad for communities because of the additional uh, drain of resources in an area. So will this project, uh, it, as proposed, alleviate it? It could, if it's done right. Does it have to be as big as, as it's being uh, portended to be? I don't think so. Uh, and so the question becomes, is there a number between 40, which uh, they can do in my mind right now without any permission, or some other number. And, and that's where we're gonna get to. And as much as we're all eager to get to that point, it's like anything else. We have to do, we have to let the department do its due diligence to let us know what the issues are, because those issues uh, coincidentally are also the issues that will make the case to try to stop something as well if it's if it just is infeasible so so that's all important mark I, I, actually let me go over here because we you sure. haven't spoken yet and then we'll go to mark just a, a quick comment about that the the data i've seen on the housing market is that the it's not at the high end the eight hundred thousand dollar homes that they're looking to really fill the crunch most of the crunch is at the lower end the, the first time family homes uh, the two bedroom one bath the three bedroom two bath homes as opposed to the mcmansions they're proposing up here so i don't and I realize that it is going to, if you get those big McMansions, it's going to increase the tax base, but is it really going to offset the amount of putting a four lane road down through here to handle the traffic and the stoplights yeah. and the street lights you're going to need and the police department and the school system? I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to pay for itself. I think sure. it's going to be a losing proposition for the city from a tax base and it's going to cost the city money to try to support an independent developer. So let me, let me also say, because folks sort of talk about this. A, a development in a project doesn't mean that my council district gets any more money. It goes into the general fund. So increasing the tax base, I'm interested because I want better services citywide in my district, but that's not my motivation. But just to push back a little bit, I don't think you're going to get a developer that's going to build something that they can't sell. I've been, for better or for worse, monitoring um, sort of prices around here. I don't think they're going to sell anything for $800,000, which is why they're proposing a project that's as dense as it is at 242. They want to, uh, they're in it for money. They're going to make up their, they want to make their money one way or the other. What the price point is here is going to be really interesting because, as you all know, everything's very cyclical. The fact that they're willing to make the investment, I mean, that is, if you stood in, in, in sort of a third party's uh, shoes for a second to do the analysis, you have to wonder how much money they think they can make to, to take on a community who has concerns, but a project that big, they literally have to move a lot of dirt to do it. It's very, very expensive. So I think it tells you a little bit about what's, what's projected to happen. I think that we, for better or for worse, will see increased housing prices in the near future, but without a doubt, they're gonna fall down again. I think gone are the days where you're going to see, at least in the foreseeable future, you know, you're not going to pay $749 like I did for my place in Solmar. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Bad news for all of you who paid too much here. Great news because you've got some of the more favorable property in the area. I can't guess what it is that they want to make, nor do I care. It all boils down to what the environmental 